What's up you guys? So I wanted to pop in here real quick before I get into this video and just mention that I plan on doing a film Q&A video at some point down the road. So please be sure to leave your questions down below for me to answer or DM them to me on Instagram. And let's just get into the video. What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariana and I do a lot of photography content here on my channel, both film and digital. So today's video actually came from a video idea that I got from a subscriber and it is all about my end-to-end -end film process. And please pardon my dog. I'm <laughs> moving around. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about my end-to-end -end film process, decisions I make throughout the process, equipment that I like to use, and just a variety of different choices that I have to make throughout the journey of shooting film that may not be the same as when shooting digitals. All right, so the first step is to choose which camera and format. And this is something that could be interchangeable, really. Um, when it comes to the film format, I shoot both 35 millimeter and medium format film so it really depends on what I want out of it and also depending on the situation that I will be shooting because that factors into the camera that I choose. The only medium format film camera I have is a rangefinder with manual focus so if I'm shooting casual moments in life, shooting memories, a lot of moving objects, I actually don't usually choose to opt for that camera because it's a little bit of a slower camera for me to focus so I usually stick to landscapes when I shoot on my medium format film camera. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if I want to shoot more photos but don't care as much about quality not to say 35 millimeter is not good quality but i just want that more casual old school parent shooting film type of photos i'll usually opt for a 35 millimeter film and use one of my 35 millimeter film cameras so that's kind of the first decision that needs to be made. Part of that decision is also choosing the film stock. So when it comes to medium format film, I always shoot Portra 400. It's something that I'm comfortable with and that I've always owned. So I just continue shooting that. When I shoot 35 millimeter film, that's kind of a space that I actually like to experiment a lot more in and play around with different film stocks. It's less expensive and it gets me more exposures per roll. So that's when I really have a decision decision of choosing which film stock that I want. If I'm going anywhere that I really want to get the photos on film, it's really important to me. Maybe it's something that I don't do very often like my trip to visit my sister. Things like that, I always go for Portra 400 because it has really never failed me, ever. On the other end of the spectrum, cheaper film stocks like Kodak Gold, Ultramax, those are the ones that I'll opt for when I just want to capture kind of everyday memories on camera or I don't really care as much about the look of the photo as much as I care about getting the photo in general. So hanging out with friends, hanging out with family, visiting my parents. Um, going around the backyard, the neighborhood, anything like that, I'll usually opt for the cheaper film stock because I don't care as much about it being portfolio worthy photos and I just want those memories on camera and almost having like the more grainy, more filmy look to it definitely transforms those photos from looking just like regular daily iPhone photos to really cool memories that I want to print or put in an album of some sort to save for the future. So that is choice number two is choosing the film stock. So next is to go out and actually shoot the photos. This could be anything from one shoot to having multiple rolls shot in one shoot all the way to having one roll of film actually lasting me multiple days and this has happened before people don't recommend it but i've never actually found anything wrong with keeping one roll of film in my camera for multiple days and actually getting more out of the one roll so when it comes to a medium format roll of film you depending on the camera that you're using can get anywhere between 10 to 15 shots on that 
roll. I find that I typically shoot a medium format roll of film very easily and if not one then two so that's something that I typically get through with one outing or one day. When it comes to 35 millimeter film you get 36 exposures per roll sometimes 37 if you push it um, usually I get 36 and a half I get like a light leak in the first one but I love that because if there's a ton of moments going on you use that roll up so quickly but you can also save it over the course of multiple days or multiple outings where it almost feels like you've got a bunch of mini rolls of film within each roll of film. So the fourth step is to actually take the film out of the camera and prepare it to be shipped. So like I said, this is my personal end-to-end -end film process and I choose not to develop and scan my own film for a variety of reasons. One is I just simply don't want to put in the time to do so. Developing and scanning my own rolls of film really is something that I would rather outsource to someone else who can also do a lot, lot better than I can myself. The second thing is just the space to keep all of the stuff. We live in a one bedroom little condo, so I simply just don't want to have like film developer and the canister lying around because we just have a lot of other stuff that already take up space. Again, everybody is different. Some people love the process of developing their own film and scanning their own film and having full control over how that image comes out. For me, it's also important how the image comes out, but that's why I do my due diligence in choosing which lab I want to send it to because labs can and will edit your photos for you and do kind of like these minor color corrections depending on the scanner depending on the film stock and when they send it to you it may look very different than if you were to simply develop and scan it yourself that's something to take into consideration but like i said since i choose to mail out my film i personally choose indie film lab to send my film to i love them i have gotten to talk to someone who works there and just learn about their journey and the fact that they just really want to keep film alive and I think that's a really important thing especially for film photographers is to be able to keep that demand going for film stocks, for film labs to stay in business, for people like me who don't want to develop and scan ourselves and it's just really important to I think support the film community especially economically and financially, if that makes sense, is just putting the money back into that industry to keep it going. So I love them. They're a small lab based out of Alabama. They just do a lot of really, really great work and photographers from all over send their film to them, me included. So I'm going to pull up their order form here on my phone so I can talk about the options that I choose. If you go on their website and go to send us film, then you get a variety of different options of how you want to place your order. So you can do a process and scan, you can scan only, process only, or do large format. Again, I always do process and scan because I do not develop or scan my own film. Um, C41 is kind of your traditional film stocks. Any really traditional color film. And then black and white is really any black and white film. You choose that option. Obviously your format, 35 millimeter or 120. Pushing, I usually do not do this. Um, scanner, so they've got a variety of different resources. And again, you can actually reach out to them directly and figure out the differences between the scanners um, as well as the little FAQ that they have. Personally, for me, once I select the other options, the scanner automatically gets chosen for me. So I actually do uncorrected under correction it's a faster processing time and i just i feel like it looks fine without being corrected i choose the smallest resolution which is large again if you want to resend it to them in the future you can always get it scanned as a larger resolution and then that automatically chooses the noritsu scanner for me so then i do jpegs tiffs are expensive i pretty much do the least expensive option because i also find that even just doing the least expensive option gets me really incredible results so that's it add roll to cart and then when you actually go to place your order it'll give you a little pdf order form that you print out and include in your package when you mail it off to them so once you place the order the next step is to actually mail the film this is something that i was very very nervous about when i first did it and i 
was surprised to find that there were not that many people who talked about the process of actually mailing film and I'm someone who needs someone to give me a step-by-step -step guide. So this is essentially my process for mailing film. What I do is I print out the order form, I take my rolls of film, um, if it's a 35 millimeter, I keep it in the little plastic canister that I get with it. If it's medium format film, I will make sure that the roll is taped and with like Fuji, they had a little adhesive with Kodak, you have to lick it. I always tape it and then put those into a Ziploc bag and air seal that Ziploc bag. Then, whether it's a combination of those or just 35 millimeter or just medium format, it all goes into a padded packing slip together. I got these from Amazon for super cheap, but pro tip once you get your negatives back from indie film lab they actually send it in their little like boxes and i just reuse those boxes no bubble wrap nothing whatever the film just goes in there by itself the order form folded up almost acts like a little bit of protection um so i just throw it all in the box seal it i bring it to usps i've done it with fedex before i've done it with U ups before i just find that um, post office first class mail is the cheapest and mail it to their address which I believe is like 1717 Norman Bridge Road Montgomery Alabama mail it out you pay for your own postage and then that's pretty much it and then they get the film they send an email that says your film has been checked in and so you know they got it they got it with your order form and then you just wait so I've gotten scans back from anywhere between two business days, two to three business days to like five or six business days. It just depends on the season. Obviously right now is a big, big photography season between weddings and portraits and like graduation photos. Lots of people are going out and taking pictures and therefore sending them to the labs at this time of the year. So the turnaround time is a little bit slower in the summer. Whereas in the winter, I would get my pictures back very very quickly once your photos are done you actually receive a pick time gallery in your email of the photos this is the best email to ever get it is so exciting getting the your scans are ready email in your mail and you get the opportunity to download them to your local computer so i always download the entire album even if there are pictures in there that i don't like i keep them all and then essentially what I do is I have a local folder on my computer that has all of my film scans by date. Um, the email actually also says that your scans expire in 14 days, but so I have an account with PicTime and I think that's the reason why my scans are still there, but I have a whole, all of my galleries are still in my PicTime account to view all of my film scans from Indie Film Lab. I would still recommend downloading them anyways to have. So I typically don't edit them. If anything, I'll straighten horizon lines or crop them, but picture quality wise and exposure and all that stuff usually they come out looking exactly what they i like them looking like so i rarely edit my photos all my film photos are pretty much untouched unedited just cropped and straightened as needed and then they get posted you guys see the photos that's when you see them on instagram or if you actually go and check out my portfolio or it's within a youtube video whatever the case may be the photos are utilized they come back as jpegs so however you would normally use jpegs and then last step is kind of the after and preserving process indie film lab keeps your negatives for a few days after you receive your gallery just in case anything needs to be rescanned, if there's any issues, anything like that, they keep them just in case. And then after a few business days, they actually mail them back to you if you choose to opt for that option. You can actually have them get rid of the negatives for you, but to have them mailed back, I believe is $9 to cover postage and like packaging materials. So you get the negatives back in a little sleeve a few days after that. And what I do is I actually go in to to my film binder where I bought these sleeves for 35 millimeter and medium format film on Amazon and I just go in 
cut up the negatives and insert them in the sleeves so that if I want to get them rescanned in the future, I always have them to do so. So that is pretty much my film process from beginning to very end. Obviously, it is a lot of steps and that's just kind of the nature of shooting film nowadays it's not so much you just take it down the street to a lab to get them developed because unfortunately i don't live in a big city where that is an option for me but it is so so worth it and if you have not already checked out indie film lab they are awesome their team is really great they've always been very responsive to me and most importantly the images always come out looking incredible before i end off wanted to just leave a little reminder that i am planning on doing a film q a so if you have any questions please leave them down below for me if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy content like this and other photography content be sure to subscribe to my channel and i will see you all in my next video bye